As I mentioned before the break, this week on the show, we're out after late season mule deer bucks. Now I've got Jeff Jones with me, and again, he already got a really nice bull this year. He was fortunate to draw two tags this year. I don't know how he did it. He, somehow he did. He got two really nice tags. So he's already tagged out on a nice bull, and now he's hoping to tag out on a really nice buck. He's been putting in for this hunt for years and years. Um, he deserves it. Your biggest buck so far? Uh, two point. No, two? Four, a little four point. Okay. Like the four point. A little so. four point, probably as big as a two point, sounds <laughs> like. <laughs> so that's, that's his biggest. So we're hoping to do a little bit better than that. We should. This is a November hunt when the deer are really starting to rut, really getting active. The big guys show up. They come out of the cover quite a bit more. And so it's kind of an exciting time to, to tag along with him and to, to see what happens with this. I'm hoping to get some footage of lots of big bucks. You know, you hear stories of it going on. So this year, I'm tagging along with him during the perfect season to get a big buck. Let's get after it and see what happens. Welcome to Jared Scott Outdoors, your source in the field for local outdoor news. Just like most hunting trips, this one started out well before the sun came out so that we could be in the hunting unit with enough time to get to the first area we wanted to be glassing at first light. We had a high point on a ridge we wanted to get to that would allow us to see a lot of country. As planned, we did make it to a great little spot to glass from just as the sun was starting to brighten the slopes around us. There was a lot of what I thought was good looking deer country we could glass, and so we were excited to see what today had to offer. We quickly spotted some elk crossing some open slopes on the distant ridges. In fact, as we kept looking, we found there were elk on nearly every ridge we could see. As we weren't after them though, I didn't even bother pulling out the spotting scope. I was actually surprised when a bull elk appeared right in front of us on a slope we'd been watching for 15 minutes already. It always amazes me how you can be glassing areas and not seeing anything and then suddenly a bull moose or elk just appear right out of nowhere. It makes you realize how easily it can be to miss seeing some animals if you hurry your glassing too much. Anyhow, we kept watching and kept seeing more elk. When a few bulls appeared below us, I couldn't help but pull out the spotting scope for this one as I could tell it was a huge bull. I'll admit that it kept my attention for a bit as I enjoyed seeing such a big six point. Probably one of the biggest ones I've seen this year. Eventually the big guy fed out of sight and so once again I re-glassed all the areas that both Jeff and I had been glassing all morning to see if anything new had appeared. Alright, so this first spot we came to is a bust. Um, we can see elk on pretty much every hillside we can glass, which is plenty. Bulls and cows, there's elk all over, but we did not see a single deer. So, uh, definitely not what we're looking for. We'll go ahead and shift over to, over to another spot and hopefully find those, those deer and, and some bucks. So we hiked on over to a different ridge so we could see some new country. And of course, all we found were elk. This time it was mostly the herds of cow elk with the small bulls that run with them that we found. But again, no deer. Both Jeff and I took different spots and spent some time glassing, and I did finally spot five does that quickly crossed a small clearing a few miles away, and then once again disappeared, but we couldn't find any bucks. It was just elk everywhere we looked. The deer may not have moved in yet, but the elk were definitely working towards their wintering grounds. At this point, we headed out and drove to a completely new area, but quickly gave up on that spot as we didn't see much sign of deer. So with just a couple hours left in the day, we headed up another ridge, even though quite honestly, we were losing hope and really shocked at the lack of deer we were seeing. Earlier, I had spotted a couple deer very briefly from a long ways off. I couldn't tell what they were, but with no other prospects, we figured we'd head that direction to get a better look. Once in the area I'd seen them, it took a little time, but eventually I did find them. One was bedded up while the other was feeding. The one feeding was a buck, so officially the first and only buck of the day. However, as you can tell, this buck was just a very small forky, not even taller than its ears. This hunt was definitely not what we'd expected. 
Here we thought we were gonna see deer all over with bucks left and right as we looked for just the right one for Jeff. And all we'd spotted in a full day of glassing many miles worth of country and the only buck we found was a tiny two point. Well, today has been a kick in the pants for sure. You know, you come out here nearly the end of November, the deer should be down pretty low. They should be in full rut. Um, just everything sets it up for having a lot of deer, seeing a lot of bucks, and hopefully finding a big one. And in the end, we spotted seven does. No. In the end, I spotted five does this morning, a couple miles off very briefly and then this afternoon I spotted two deer from a few miles off we came in to investigate a little more and as you saw it was a two point a doe so seven deer total for the entire day probably a thousand elk and uh, and this was you know the kind of hunt we expected to just see a hundred deer and lots of bucks so very frustrating not quite sure what to do tomorrow but we're down to hour and a half of light and just nothing happening. Pretty frustrating. So the next day, what could we do? Well, we tried heading up to some higher country in the early a.m. hours, well before first light, but ran into too much snow. So turning the truck around, we went back to plan B and headed to the lower country where we could still access it and try a new area. Looking at my mapping app, we found what looked like a good high spot that was central to tons of country that had plenty of open areas to spot deer from. Because we had such an early start, we were actually still able to make it to that high spot about first light. As we glassed, we weren't surprised to see more elk. I didn't even bother to film any of them except for this one, as we'd seen so many the day before. However, in reality, we didn't see nearly as many elk from this spot compared to the day before. Apparently, this one wasn't quite in their wintering route. However, unlike the day before, I was actually surprised to see some deer pretty quickly and noticed one was a buck following some does. They were a long ways off and so I quickly got out my spotting scope but couldn't get it focused on the deer before it walked into the trees. Luckily, a couple does walked back out and into the open and just as we expected would happen, the buck followed giving us a pretty good look at it. It was a four point, and now that I look at it on the computer, it looks bigger than I remember. At the time we were watching it, it just looked like a decent buck, but with shallow forks and about a 24 inch wide frame. With it being our only prospect, however, and nothing else in sight, we had to consider it. It didn't give us a lot to go on though, as all the deer disappeared in the trees. We did spot a few more does moving back and forth, but never saw the buck again. We'd keep it in mind while we kept our eye out for more deer. There was still plenty of country to see, and from past experience, deer could appear at any point. It was actually Jeff who saw the next group of deer. There ended up being five in all as they moved in and around the trees, but try as we might, we just couldn't put any antlers on them. They were on a hillside right in front of us, so we kept coming back to them to see if a buck had showed up. But in several hours of watching, no buck ever did join them. A few more does were spotted here and there, but that was it. It was now 11 a.m., and while we'd seen more deer, we'd only seen 10 in all that time. Still not what we had envisioned at the start of this hunt. There were at least deer tracks around, and we did see one good four-point, so a step in the right direction. The question was, do we go try to find that four-point, or keep looking? The problem with that buck and the deer it was with was they were in a tough spot to get close enough to without just walking right through it. As it stood, they were probably a mile away and were in a hard spot to see any way that we could get in on the deer. We walked around on the ridge we were on just to get some different vantage angles in different areas, but still we didn't find any more deer. So now it was decision time on what to do. All right, so it's now been several hours up on on this point glassing lots of big country and we at least did see I think figure about 10 deer this time um, and that one four point so that's a huge improvement over yesterday um, however for the amount of country we could see it's still pretty disappointing really overall so we'll try to make a new game plan and go from there I left the decision up to Jeff who decided that with no obvious way to get to that buck and to find him again we would just head to another spot. 
Wouldn't you know it, but as soon as we had practically given up and were working towards that other area, we spotted some does bedded up in some thick trees, and next to the doe was a buck that at first glance looked like a great buck. We just saw a toad. All I had noticed before we hurried out of sight so we could get ready for the shot was how tall it was. With our quick view that we had, we both had the impression it was a good buck. And with all the deer we weren't seeing, I don't know if there was even any question as to whether Jeff would take this buck or not. We snuck into under 100 yards because there were so many trees. We could see one of the does off to the buck's left, our right, and it was facing directly to us. So we didn't dare move very much for fear of getting busted. It took a few minutes for Jeff to be able to set up using the shooting sticks and to still have an angle between those close tree trunks. In fact, one position allowed him to shoot the body of the buck, but he couldn't see its rack to verify it was the buck for sure. So he moved a little to the left until he had an angle between some trees and could see at least part of the antlers. You should be able to see horns from here, so you know you're on him. With the tight shooting angle, it was a good thing he had the three-leg shooting sticks because that allowed him to have a solid rest. And with the target verified, Jeff was ready. All he had to do was take the safety off and ease off a shot. As you watch the video, the deer body looks like the same color as the tree trunks. You can make out some antler if you know what you're looking for. Jeff had an open shot through those trees as long as he held steady. Even though we could verify it was the buck, we actually spent a few extra minutes making sure Jeff knew what position the buck was laying in so he could aim at the vitals. Got him. Yeah. You got him. Didn't even move. Oh my gosh! The buck just lay right over, so we knew it was down. But we still didn't know exactly oh how God. big this buck was. So it was with some excitement that we headed on over to check it out. <laughs> Can't believe this. After such a disappointing start to the hunt, this quick deer encounter and ensuing shot was a complete surprise, which only added to the excitement of the moment. Absolutely crazy. You have no idea how crazy this is. We were surprised when the does that we were so worried about busting us didn't even get up at first while we started walking up to the buck. I can only imagine that they were a little confused since the buck didn't get up. Of course, as we got pretty close, the does eventually jumped up and then they took off, leaving us just the buck to go have a look at. <laughs> Well, that is a pretty buck, Jeff. Okay. Here, I'm going to come from this other side. <laughs> He's tall and dark. A little extra kicker over there. Man. That is an awesome buck. We've been looking all day, two days for him. I haven't seen hardly anything. Wow, <laughs> oh, this is awesome. All right, yeah, let's get get the tag and. All right. You know, I've said it before. It's kind of crazy when you're hunting how things can just change like that, and that's the story with this with this hunt for sure. I mean, what a frustrating hunt. This is November, this is the end of November. This is a, a tag he's been putting in for, for how many years? 20 years. 20, 20 years. years he's been in, All right. So. so, you know, you kind of expect for this tag, this unit, we're gonna be seeing these kind of bucks all over the place. <laughs> That's what we thought. And in the end, we couldn't hardly find a deer. And it's just been really tough. And so it was just frustrating and not knowing what to do and just, just like that, uh, what was looking like a really frustrating, it was a frustrating hunt, and now he's got this monster on the ground. So what do you think, Jeff, of the hunt? It's been awesome. It's, it's been a great, great year. Great elk, <laughs> great mule deer. 
if you saw, he got a fantastic elk a month or so back. So, so uh, he's not drawing any tags next year. I guarantee it. He can't even put in next year. He did really well this year. He deserved it. So, anyways, that's going to wrap it up. It turned out to be a fantastic end to this hunt. Fantastic, beautiful, tall, dark buck. Nice extra kicker there. Um, just, just beautiful. Worked out perfectly. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to the Jared Scott Outdoors YouTube channel.